Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And this is a YouTube live event. <laughs> Tonight is, sorry, guys, had a mental block. Tonight it's um, Tuesday, the 31st of August, 2021. And... If you would like to join the live chat, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is be logged into your YouTube account, your YouTube channel, or your Gmail account, and you can join live chat. If you don't have either of those, don't stress. Just leave comments in the comments section below me here, and I'll do my best to answer you after the show. Okay, now some quick housekeeping before we get started. Please give us a thumbs up. If it that little thumbs up, if you click that thumbs up, it really, really helps our channel stay visible on YouTube. And if you haven't already subscribed, may I suggest that you do? <laughs> because when you subscribe, and all you've got to do is click the subscribe button and then do the little bell, and you'll be notified every time we go live or upload a video. Now, tonight's show is. I think this will be one of the best shows I've we've ever done, we've ever had. Um, because I want to talk to you about the best event. In, I'm so excited, I can't get the words out. The best investment you'll ever make, ever, in your life. Now, does anyone know what it is? Can anyone tell me what they think that might be? If you've known me a while, you probably... Um, do already know what I'm about to say. But let's see. Who knows what it is? Oh, Suzanne. Wow. Woohoo. Wow. I hadn't even noticed. Thank you. Okay. Well, next week we'll have to have some sort of prize, won't we? That's really good. And Suzanne's got a pantry, <laughs> Joy, membership. Well, yeah, that could be the second best investment, Joy. <laughs> um, oh, Yvonne, I'm sorry. Your internet's mucking up. Is it rainy, windy? It's very windy here, guys. So you can see I've got wind hair because I've been outside today. Um, if your internet goes, we're really sorry. Um but you can catch the replay later on. Yes, your pantry. It is absolutely the best investment you will ever make. And I do not care what all the, um, you know, spend your money here and I'll triple it in three minute guys say. And I don't care what the um, investment gurus say. And I don't care what all the guys that have the seminars and brainwash you into buying something say. They're investments and they may well be great investments, but the best investment you will ever make is in your pantry. Even if you pay full price for your pantry and what's in it, the contents, the return on that investment will, be, will always be better than any other investment that you have. Why? Because prices are always going up. And aren't they always going up? We've, we've noticed it. We've all noticed it, especially in the last few months. Prices are always going up. Now, they may come down occasionally. And when they do, that's when you stock up. That's my advice. You stock up. You buy low. Because they will always go up again. And when they go up, they will usually go up higher than what they were before than what they had been before they went down. So in effect, what you've done is you've bought cheap, you've saved some money, and you've increased the value of your pantry investment. I, look, I can't stress enough how important a stocked pantry is for everyone, be you young and just starting out like Hannah is or 
a young couple that's just just moved out of home, just got married, whatever. You could be young family, mum, dad, and a couple of little kids. You could be a single parent with children. You could be empty nesters. You could be, you know, it doesn't matter. Your pantry, whatever stage of life you are in, your pantry will be your best investment and it will always be your best investment. Think of it this way. If you fill your pantry with half price groceries, you've doubled the value of your investment. And you know what? There is absolutely no other legal risk-free way for you to double your investment that doesn't take um, a risk, you know, and that doesn't take years and years for that to happen. But if I buy tea bags on half price this week, I've doubled the value of them, but bought low and doubled the value of my pantry, of that item in my pantry. Tax-free, risk-free, because I know that I will always use tea bags. So keep your pantry full. Stockpile. Build it up. Use it, but then replace what you use. Now, I've noticed um, shortages happening in different things, odd things here and there. Whole brands just disappearing just disappearing shrinking choices have you ever um walked down an aisle in the supermarket what's a good aisle okay fruit juice if you walk down the fruit juice aisle where oh 10 years ago it would have been one whole side of a whole aisle full of different fruit juices in bottles in cans the poppers the tetra packs whatever it shrunk. It has shrunk now. At my local Coles that I go to the most, it's one bay, and that's all the fruit juices in one bay on one side of one aisle in the supermarket. <sighs> Shrinking choices. Keep your pantry stocked because those choices could disappear. Then you've got things like um, the incredible shrinking products where the price on the shelf stays the same but the actual size of the product shrinks. So unless you're really, 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 really paying attention, you don't notice it. But that is actually a price increase. Now, it's been called shrinkflation and I think that's pretty catchy and it's certainly memorable because I remembered it. But it is happening all the time. That affects our pantry and that affects the investment in our pantry, the value of our investment. Now, a prime example of this is morning fresh dishwashing concentrate in the little bottles. Now, about seven years ago, it was a 450 ml bottle. Then it went down to 425 mils. Then it went down to 400 mils. And now, now it is 350 mils. Now, if you look at the bottle on the shelf, it looks the same size. It looks, it appears to be exactly the same as it was when it was a 450 ml bottle. But the contents have shrunk. Now, if you stocked up when it was on sale and bought the bigger bottles on sale, you have another great return on your investment. Now, we talked about this over in Cheapskates Chatter, but the Reject Shop currently has 400 ml bottles of Morning Fresh Concentrate, limited range of fragrances. So if you like the fancy ones, you're not going to get it, but it's $2 a bottle and they are the 400 ml bottles. That was a really good find. Hannah, I think she's got enough to last her 10 years. 
she bought she stocked up um before she moved out i added some more to my kitchen pantry so that um i wouldn't have to worry about it it's a i like morning fresh which is why i thought of it but it added to the value of our pantry and we still bought it for less we bought low added to the value of our pantry now another way of keeping the pantry stocked that boosts your return on your investment is it's a no-brainer but it's stop stop buying takeaway or going out to eat and we all know that eating out or takeaway home delivery whatever costs a lot more than cooking a meal at home now cooking a normal meal at home not one of those fancy schmancy tv show meals but a normal meal at home because you just you know you're not paying that much for your groceries so you'll be saving i've lost my train of thought we're not paying so much for your groceries and the return on your grocery investment again is more than you'll get for any stock or bond that you could possibly buy and there's minimal risk you keep your pantry full there's minimal risk now if you are of the opinion that stocking up and keeping the pantry full is a waste of time, that it is hoarding, that um, it's fear-mongering for no reason. Think about this. Just think about it. If you buy a year's worth of pasta for 50 cents a packet when it's, um regular price is a dollar a packet it's going to cost you 26 dollars for a year and that's i'm suggesting you use a packet a week you've not spent 50 percent. you've saved 50 percent of the cost and you've doubled the value of your investment you invested 26 dollars, and the value is 52 dollars You can't get a return like that anywhere else. When you think about your pantry as an investment, it's easy to see the value. If you have someone in your home, in your life, who thinks that stocking the pantry, you know, you should have a tinfoil hat on and, you know, you you're a bit out there and or a bit weird or a bit hippie la la or whatever because you have your pantry stocked you might just point out to them the investment what it's worth and what you actually paid for it especially if you are really good at shopping the sales or even shopping ahead because you don't necessarily need to shop the sales you could be like I was and shop just once a year. Now, because I shopped once a year, I often missed out on the half price sales through the year. But what it meant was when I shopped, that was the price I bought, bought at. So I didn't have to shop again for 12 months. The prices will go up and down during that 12 months, but mostly up. I bought at a particular price. I skipped that. I, I skipped the risk of paying more by buying less and shopping more often. It worked. It worked really, really well until things started to get a bit chaotic. So you don't necessarily have to shop all the time at half price to increase the value of your pantry over or the worth of your pantry over what you spent does that make sense now someone's going to say but you use it you use it well you're supposed to use it that's why you have a pantry to use it it's not there to look pretty so that when people come into the house they think oh isn't she wonderful she's got a pantry it's supposed to be used 
But even doing that, you're ahead when you keep your pantry stocked. When you are buying what you use and at today's price, and hopefully it's a sale price, you know, and hopefully half price or better, when you replace what you use, you can buy it um, at the price at the time. Now, if it's on sale, you are ahead again. This is what I was saying about I shopped once a year. If you shop for sales, you can do that. But to really make a difference, though, and get the return on your investment, you need to plan ahead and you need to buy enough of whatever it is on sale to last you until the next time it goes on sale. That's where your price book comes in handy so that you know the high prices, low prices. You can watch the sales cycle. Everything has a sales cycle. When you do that, you never pay retail. You never pay the RRP on your groceries. So your investment is always, always going to be worth more than the cost, what it costs you. So things that are easy to, to buy ahead to do this with are obviously those things that don't expire or things you can preserve so that they'll stay fresh. Things like tea, coffee, jam, um, tin tomatoes, pasta, beans, dishwashing liquid, shampoo, deodorant, laundry soap. Toilet paper, toilet paper. We never ever want to run out of toilet paper. Um, it doesn't go off. It stores well in the shed. Um, I'm not suggesting you need to run out and buy a whole heap either, by the way. I'll just throw that in there. Toothbrushes, they often come on sale for a dollar each. When they're a dollar each, if you've got the money, buy as many as you can. They don't go off and you always need them. Now, if you look at your shopping list like this, look at everything on your shopping list like that, then um, you get to figure out when to buy and what price to buy at. And your pantry is always full. And when you have a full pantry, you have options. You know? And when you have a full pantry, you have security. You don't need to worry about floods blocking you in. You don't need to worry about hot weather. You don't need to worry about transport strikes or sick kids or just a case of the shopping blur. You don't need to worry about being unemployed if suddenly you lose your job. You know that your pantry is full so you'll be able to eat for X amount of weeks or months. That's a huge stress reliever to know that you don't have to worry about what to feed your family, how to keep them clean, how to keep your home clean, is a huge stress reliever. If your pantry's full, you, you don't need to shop immediately. You have options. So when someone tells you you're nuts or you're hoarding or you're the reason they can't get what they want. And that was said to me um, last week. I'm the reason they can't get what they want. Just ignore them. Just ignore them. They're jealous that you made a really wise, very profitable investment and they didn't. They're jealous that the profit you're making is pretty much tax-free. They're jealous that you were smart enough to think ahead and they are probably stressed beyond belief, worried about what they're going to feed their kids, how they're going to manage because they didn't do it. Now, they will be even more stressed if it's someone that you have often said, look, why don't you, you know, if it's half price, buy two or what, build a bit of a pantry, keep a bit of a stockpile. If you've been talking to them about it and they haven't done it and now they wish they had they will they will attack you 
that's probably just human nature but just ignore them I was going to I'll get into trouble for saying this I'm gonna say it anyway you can't fix stupid you just can't fix stupid um, people that won't listen people that won't be told people that don't want to take responsibility for themselves there's only so much you and I can do to help them and encourage them and then it's up to them. So if you've got to the point of no return, then you just have to let it roll right over you and ignore it, seriously, because you are smart enough to put the time in, you're smart enough to put the effort in, you're smart enough to put the money in to make a really good investment with a return like no other on this earth that is legal, absolutely legal and tax-free. So your pantry is the best investment you will ever make. I'm just going to have a little drink here. I'm getting a bit dry and hoarse. When your pantry is full, you can do things like um, make your husband a fruitcake because he wanted fruitcake. See, it's little tiny. These are oh, can you see? little tiny fruit um, fruitcake loaves. These are. I made them in my little mini loaf tin. He wanted fruitcake, so I made fruitcake for him because I had the ingredients in the pantry. I didn't have to go out and get the fruit. I didn't have to go out and get the sugar or the spices. I didn't have to get the eggs or the flour. It was all there in the pantry, all ready to go. So we made little fruitcakes. I made a whole bunch of them um, because he likes fruitcake. So I was being kind, I made little fruitcakes for him. But... You know, if I didn't have didn't have that stuff in the pantry, wouldn't have been able to make the fruit cakes. If the pantry hadn't been stocked, I wouldn't have been able to make those cakes. So it pays to keep the pantry stocked. Now I did a little um, price comparison um, oh, a couple of years ago now. Um, on how much the these little little loaf little mini loaf fruit cakes cost to make and they cost it's I tell you it's four dollars ninety five for the mixed fruit now that's Aldi mixed fruit guys I've got a, a mixed fruit comparison coming out later this week but that's Aldi mixed fruit now it's been four dollars ninety five for the last three years it's still the best value mixed fruit in Australia um, it's really nice too um, $4.95 for the fruit then you've got two eggs 125 grams of butter two cups of flour and some spices on a squeeze of lemon juice well lemons off the tree so it was free I made half a dozen of the little loaf cakes and three dozen um, cupcake sizes and this is a muffin paper which is why it looks small I didn't have cupcake paper so I'm using the muffin papers but I just made a cupcake size three dozen of those out of that one mixture so it was under under eight dollars whereas one of those little loaf cakes at a cafe is four dollars eighty on its own so good return on investment to have the ingredients in the pantry to be able to do that instead of having to buy it because I can tell you if we had to buy it we wouldn't be we would not be able to afford it we just would not be able to afford um, to buy it so now it's trying to do 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 oh, sorry I've lost 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 where am i there we go thank you i lost the comment that i was clicking on sorry guys now 
So your pantry is your best investment, always. It doesn't matter whether it's um, a single door, two shelf cupboard, or it could be a whole room devoted to your groceries. It could be boxes under the bed and the shelf in the linen cupboard and stuff over the benches, whatever. As long as you keep it full of things that you use and as long as you remember to use them, you can't go wrong. You just cannot go wrong. Now, what started me on this um, thinking of my pantry as an investment was oh, years and years and years ago, Donald Trump, when he was doing the um, the business show that's gone out of my head for a while, anyway, he made a statement that keeping a pantry full, keeping ingredients in your pantry was just a waste of time and money and effort. And I was devastated, absolutely devastated when he said that because I actually quite like the show. Um, because in his, in his opinion, there was no need to keep food in your house when you could just buy it on your way home from work, buy what you need, buy your breakfast on the way to work, buy your lunch, buy your dinner on the way home from work. Just buy it. Apart from the fact that not healthy folks who could afford to eat out three meals a day, seven days a week, you know, and if and that's you know that's twenty one meals. If you're a couple, that's forty two meals. If you have children, it just goes on and on. And even if you averaged it at three dollars a meal, that's going to be a lot of money. You would be working just to eat just to pay for the food that you eat. So that was a really, I thought that was a really stupid thing to say. Real, and it actually hmm, showed a little bit of perhaps ignorance on his part of how real people live. But anyway, that spurred me on to figuring out just how much my pantry was worth. And that one year, and it was a pretty lean year for us, but I managed to keep the pantry full. I was shopping every month then and I managed to keep the pantry full and add to it with the half price um, by buying two and doubling up. At the end of the year, I had spent um, $3,600, but my pantry was worth close to $8,000. So I don't think that was a bad investment. I don't think that was a bad investment. I had enough in it at the end of that year to feed us and keep us clean and keep our house clean for another 11 months. But I hadn't spent any anywhere near what it would normally have cost. It's really important um, to me to know how much um, my groceries cost and how much I'm spending. So I use the tracking spreadsheet off our website. If you go to the tip sheets, there's a grocery tr grocery tracking spreadsheet and I fill that out faithfully. Every time I come home, I get my dockets, I go through and I fill it. I love that it auto adds up for me. I don't have to do that. It just adds up and I know what I'm spending at the end of the end of each week, the end of each month and at the end of the year so that I know I'm on budget or over budget I'm a little bit over at the moment because I bought a whole heap remember I bought a whole heap of chicken um, chicken and mince uh, a couple of months ago so that sort of cleaned us out but the pantry was full so all I'm buying at the moment is milk and eggs I did buy hard cheese last week because we were down and I said, I'll get an extra block of hard cheese. So it's not it's not a dumb thing to do to invest in your pantry. It's really not. Uh, let me go down. Sorry, guys. All right. Now, another way that you can invest in your pantry that costs very, very little 
is to simply grow some of what you eat. Um, seeds. I've got turnips, I've got sugar snap peas, I've got ordinary peas like climbing peas. Uh, oh, onions. They're ready to go in. And I've got broccoli, lettuce, silver beet, spring onions, all sorts of things, tomato, tomatoes, cabbages. I grow the mini cabbages and the mini cauliflowers because they're faster to grow and one is usually enough for two meals for us, although for, for the family. So that means I'm not worrying about a big cabbage or a big cauliflower um, mildewing before we can use it. So I grow the minis and they don't take up as much space. They work really well for us. Um, now. Okay, now I'll go. Oh, yes, it was Joy's birthday. Happy birthday, Joy. Did you have a nice day? I hope you did. Now, um, Yvonne, um, send me, Yvonne, send me a contact us. Go to the website and click, oh, there's a link under there for the contact us and I'll get back to you. Um, now, Paula, up the top here, Paula emailed me and I, um, I'm yesterday, the day before, and about she's she's got her Presto pressure canner, way to go, Paula, and she was asking about jars and lids. Um, oh, I wish I'd been able to be more help. Because jars, canning jars and lids are really, still really, really hard to get. Um, some places have some. Some will have jars, some will have lids. Nobody seems to have the bigger jars. Um, you can get plenty of the small jam and jelly jars. But you, well, they're a bit impractical when you're canning for a family. And you really don't want to waste the lids on those if you can get the lids now i got some lids at spotlight uh, a couple of months ago they were mm, they're expensive they were 14 dollars, 15 dollars for 12 they're very expensive but then that's comparable with what um ball and fowlers and weck all are at the moment anyway but i wasn't very happy with them they just i had out of the batch of eight, I had um, four fails. So that was a 50% failure rate. So I wasn't prepared to go back and buy more at that rate. Um, those lids will go on jam and pickles that aren't quite so valuable as my chicken and mince and things. Um, Hannah was able to pick me up some quart jars from Big W where she lives, which was really nice. She got was able to get me a dozen. So that was really good. But again, they have doubled in price. If you if you notice, if you're buying new jars, new ball jars, they have doubled in price in the last um, 18 months, which is, makes them really, really expensive. So I was just telling Paula this morning that she mentioned getting them off Amazon, but they have to come from the USA. Sometimes... Excuse me, guys, I've got the hiccups now. Sometimes it's actually cheaper, even with the conversion rate and shipping, to buy them from the US and get them shipped over than it is to buy them here. It just takes such a long time to get here, and at the moment it's taken even longer. So that was another option. Now, she said she got some. Where where did you get them from, Paula? And do you know what size you got? You probably do because you ordered them because that would be really handy. I looked at um, Fowler's La Cola today. They have some, but, boy, they're expensive. They were uh, nearly $60 for a dozen. 
they make a jar five dollars each that's really really expensive and i know that we reuse the jars and we reuse them and we reuse them but that's really expensive oh speaking of that i've got something to show you um last batch of uh, mints i did had it all in the canner and let it come down put it in the canner and it does its thing and when it came down and it was time to lift them out i lifted a couple out and when i picked up this jar that happened the bottom dropped right off it i have never had that happen to me before the bottom dropped right off it's almost a clean it's like it's been cut so i don't know whether i've knocked it um and not noticed that it was perhaps cracked or something i don't know so that was a jar of mints that went into the bin and i was a bit upset but i saved the jar but i should be able to save the jar and i should be able to pop the lid off without actually because it's um not vacuum sealed i should be able to pop the lid off without actually having to use the bottle opener and reuse it we'll see um we will see but i thought i'd show that to you hmm. kerry does canning so she might know all right now uh, yeah jars are really hard to find really really hard to find at the moment um kerry okay i've heard about that but i can't get the tatler rings anywhere i'd have to buy them from us which I, seriously doesn't worry me but i can't get the tatler rings anywhere here do you know if you know somewhere to get them here that would be good um, uh, <laughs> Bob, I think I was more upset that I'd lost the lost the mints than anything else, Bob. It was I just picked it up and it came off and the bottom was still in the water. It was oh well, these things happen. Well, that's the first time that's that's the first time I've ever broken a jar in all my years of water bath canning or my couple of years of pressure canning that's the only time i've ever broken a jar so it was a bit um um a bit um <gasps> mm, kerry i wonder if the fowler's gaskets or the WEC gaskets would work. I need to try find out. Um, because I have heaps of the Fowler's, um, the Fowler's rubber gaskets. I have to see. I think the trick is uh, the way it fits over the rim of the jar, not so much the the lid, but over the rim of the jar. Mm, right. Thanks, Paula. I'll have a look. Um, oh, no. Where are you, Maddie? If you're in Victoria, try the reject shop. Uh, not the reject shop. Um, NQR. NQR often has um, teas that are no longer available um, just sitting on the shelf. So if you're, in, if you're in Victoria, try NQR. And I think NQR now does um, online orders. They may have changed back to not doing them, but they were for a while doing online orders too. So you might be able to even... Um, 
buy them online. Um, no. <laughs> um, I'm, you've seen me cook. Well, my gardening's a bit like my cooking. I go broccoli. Now, the one thing I do prefer to do is direct sow. I, mm, I find that, you know, sprinkling the seeds and then watering them and then thinning them and then putting them into pots and then that doesn't work for me. I do much better with direct sowing. So I actually have a big long stick, uh, about a metre long, a piece of, oh, know, a piece of edging or something, and I went along and I marked centimetre spaces, centimetre dots on it so that I can get the spacing right um, because when when you direct sow, the spacing is really, I have found the spacing is really important and labelling so that you know that's broccoli there and onions are down there so you don't get them mixed up. And then I just direct sow. I don't soak um I don't soak the seeds at all. But then we have a pretty high seed turnover here, so they don't actually get to be that little bit older and drier and harder. But no. I know they say you should soak um, carrot seeds, but I don't grow carrots. I can't, grow, I can't justify the space um, for the return. That we say they need quite a bit of space for the amount that I would get back. Um, so I, you know, my garden is sort of prime real estate. So I want to put the things in that are going to give me the best return. So tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchinis, eggplants, capsicums, onions, um, Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery takes a lot of water. It takes a lot of time. So, and I can get it for a dollar a bunch. So, it's, there's no point for me to grow celery. So, that sort of thing. And same with carrots. When I can buy them for 50 cents a kilo, you know, it costs more than that to grow them. So, that. That sort of thing. I, I tend to look at um, the garden as prime real estate and I want to get the best value out of it. I do a lot of um, over under planting. So anything that's taller will often get um, a row of beetroot or turnips or parsnips or something underneath it. Um, that works quite well. And the other thing I do always in summer is. Um, put marigolds in the tomato beds in amongst the tomato plants I will have a marigold or two and they they work really well to get the bugs away so otherwise my gardening is very much um, not the way grandma did it not the way my mother did it it's my way but it works it, it has to work for me now we started the um, um, the new garden beds arrived last Thursday, last Wednesday and Thursday. They came in two lots. So on Saturday, Wayne put two together for me, which meant, meant we had to move all the fruit trees to put them in. So the fruit trees are all scattered around the backyard at the moment. And then I started, I put down layers of cardboard and I have been saving the um, prunings from the trees, especially from our apple tree because apple tree wood is very good for doing this, putting that on top of the cardboard. Then we've got a layer of straw and we are emptying the full beds that we're replacing into the new beds. But that's taking me, I'm doing that bit by bit because I can't I can't I can push the full wheelbarrow I can pull the full wheelbarrow but I can't steer it because it it overbalances on me so I only do a half a barrel load at a time so I'm a bit slow to fill it and move it over 
because I really, I'm really feeling the push to get the summer garden going. It's just, I'm really, 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 really pushed. Now, I had to move the strawberry bed. Well, I had thought that I'd just leave the strawberry bed where it was and we'd just put the new garden over the top of it because it must be... It must be 16, 17 years old, that strawberry bed. And while I have added new strawberries to it occasionally, some of them I think are probably still the originals. They just keep going. They're really good. Um, and I had started new strawberries. I have got 20 new strawberry plants started. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to... And Wayne went, no, no, no. We'll, we've got those two little empty spots over there that will be perfect for strawberries. I'm like, so I was out there trying to very carefully transplant these strawberries without damaging them and ruining them and whatever. Ha! Huh. Oh, I swear, one clump, it was bigger than a dinner, a dinner plate. There was no way I was going to be able to separate those. I just buried it. I tried. I just buried it. We've got new strawberries. That sounds very extravagant, doesn't it? But seriously, sometimes you just got to say no. So we did that. So we've started doing that and it's turned into a much bigger job than we thought it was going to be. And this all come about because the veggie boxes that we have are timber and they are 15 years old. Now they have stood up really, really well. For 15 years they have had continual crops going through them. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, all year round they have you know they've had something going in them and I've just topped them up as um, the straws sunk they've needed topping up I've just topped them up but this winter one that I had potatoes in actually split the side split and it's all sort of blown out so that was a case of uh, when we get the potatoes out <laughs> We're going to have to empty it and try and repair it and then we were looking at them and I just said you know what they all need major major some sort of major work done to them usually I just give them a coat of oil the start of every summer and they're right but they all needed you know some needed the hinges were coming off and whatever so we decided we'd get new veggie beds well the man that does those doesn't do those anymore which is a bit of a shame. So we had to go online and order some, which we did. We were able to get them. Then we started that. So, of course, starting that means that you've got to do something else. It's leading to something else. Something else. So it's going to be a massive, it's going to be a three-month job, I think. But it will be so worth it because it will more than double the size of the vegetable garden without actually impacting too drastically on the actual backyard so that was really good and that was all because you asked if I if I soak my seeds did I answer that no I don't um, now let me see more 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 Okay, eBay and Amazon. Oops, where did I go there? I keep my ball lids too. Um, I usually write on them. Once it's been used for canning, I usually just get a Sharpie and write jam on it so that I know um, it's not to be used for anything else and it goes onto the jam or the pickles or, yeah, for dehydrated beans or carrots or mushrooms or whatever. And they do work really, really well just because there's no point throwing it out. I'm not quite... <laughs> I'm not quite game enough to try reusing a used one 
Now, I've been watching quite a few videos and I guess, um, you know, circumstances make us do and try new things. And some of the women on the canning shows that I've been watching have actually reused the ball lids, but they're very particular about, about them and, and checking the rubber and so on. I'm not quite game enough to try it myself, mainly because I just don't want to waste the food. Um, if it fails, you know, it'll, and one one woman did say that some of hers, you know, she had thought had had sealed and she put them, you know, waited the 24 hours, put them away, wiped them down, put them away. And when she went back a couple of weeks later, some of them had failed and that was ruined food. So, you know, I'm not quite prepared to do that, but um, I do reuse them for um, things that don't need to be pressure canned pretty much. It works. Um, Kerry says, be very careful buying lids made in China. The metal isn't as thick and it will buckle in the canner. And the um, rubber, whatever they're using for the seal isn't the same. Now, if they're off Amazon or eBay, be really, really careful because they just look just like the ball lids. So, yeah, get them from a reputable um Re, um, retailer here we go I've got to make a note of this plastine glass in Adelaide jars okay we shall have a look because funny thing last year I was desperate for lids now I've got lids I'm out of jars <sighs> I've, I've gone through my pasta sauce jars I've gone through all sorts of things We'll see. Um, yeah, all right. Night, Delaney. Here we go. Is that your first summer veggie, Joy? Fresh radish from the garden. What sort of radish? I like the French ones, the long... French ones are really good. Radishes are good to do the underplanting too. You plant them under something that grows a bit taller so that you're using all your space. Really works now. Okay. Beans to climb up corn. No, because they don't grow corn. Corn takes up too much space for um, it's one of those things. The real estate's too too valuable. It takes up too much space and too much water for the return we get on it here on a suburban block. Um, if I had more room and I could spread it out, I would most definitely grow corn. When I grow, the food I grow, I grow to feed us. It's not just a, you know, I'll grow corn and it will do as one or two meals. I'm going to grow corn, I have to get enough to last as 12 months till I can grow it again. Same with the peas, the beans, um, you know, the lettuces have to last all summer. The tomatoes have to give us enough to do the salads and our sandwiches and make sauce and do sun-dried tomatoes. If I'm going to put my time and effort into it, if I'm going to pay for the water, if I'm, you know, investing in the garden, the return has to be worth it. And while it's fun to grow corn, and when the kids were little, we grew it so they could see, the return just isn't there. But I like bush beans. I prefer bush beans to climbing beans. I, I do better with bush beans than I do climbing beans. Um, I don't know why. I just do um, pumpkins. I want to put pumpkins in this year. Um, it's been a couple of years since we grew pumpkins. Um, 
last time we went away we went away for a week when we left home they were like yay big when we came home they'd taken over half the backyard um so you have to watch pumpkins but we have a trellis that i can grow the pumpkins up and this year i'm going to try growing the zucchinis and the capsicums up a teepee so around the teepees to try and just keep them contained and tamed that's my plan for this year for the zucchini and the cucumbers um, i put the um, tomatoes in cages simply because they're easier for me to I don't have to worry about tying them and staking them so much if they're in the cage. That works. E that's easier for me. Um, gardening has to, it has to be easy and it has to be fun, and you have to get something out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to. I suppose it depends why you grow, why you have a garden. For us, for me, the garden is to feed us. It's not not um, a hobby. It's not a um, something to do over summer. It is to feed us. It is a serious food making venture. So yeah, I have to be able to get the things that we use the most from it or the things that are the most expensive to buy from it so um it's really expensive now i have we have 13 at the moment we have 13 fruit trees and they're all in pots now, someone asked me um the other day why they're in pots they're in pots because that well most of them are dwarf varieties anyway so they don't get overly big but they're in pots so that I can manage them myself. I don't have to, if they're in the ground and they get too big, I can't, you know, I, I'm past balancing on the ladder to prune the tree or pick the fruit. So they need to be, I put them in pots deliberately and it also means I can move them as we need to. As we have this last weekend, we move them all in, out into one spot they'll all get put back around different places but we've got um, four apple trees a couple of peach trees oranges mandarin lemon lime um, we have rhubarb we have strawberries i have raspberries i'm looking to extend the raspberry bed this summer if i can um, I might try and try and get some, some fresh raspberry canes to put in with the ones that we have and see how they go. Get a few more raspberries off because I love raspberries. And they seem to grow really well in Melbourne. But, yeah, no. So, yes, if I'm putting putting the effort into the garden, it has it has to be worthwhile. You know, it's... it's um, it's a lot of work. It's growing. Growing food isn't isn't um, a lazy person's pursuit. It's a lot of work. Now, admittedly, it's spaced out work because you've got all the work you put into getting the beds ready to plant, and then the planting. Once they're planted, you sort of got it easy until it's harvest time. And then once harvesting, you've got to do the preserving. So that, that gets a bit frantic too. And, you know, I don't know, God had a warped sense of humour when he made everything turn ripe at once, didn't he? Because it's the zucchinis, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the onions, the capsicums, the cabbages, they're all ripe at once. They're all ready to be harvested at once and they all need to be used up <laughs> or preserved. So you sort of go flat chat for a few weeks, but then you've got to, reasonably quiet in between times so yeah all righty okay guys sorry i've been waffling on a bit here i didn't mean to i usually do but think of your pantry think of your pantry as an investment when when you go to stock it when you're looking to do your grocery shopping think of it as investing you know 
if you're not comfortable investing in something, then you know if you're not comfortable buying something, then it's not going to be a good investment. So perhaps don't, or only buy a small amount of whatever it is. But think of your pantry as an investment because you will not get a better, better investment ever anywhere. You know, and even, you know, they could try and sell you the Harbour Bridge for $500. Won't be as good an investment as your pantry. Trust me. All right. So now following on from this, next week's show is already in the works. I've already started started it because it's going to be slightly different, just a little bit different in that I'm... Um, I went to get some um, seasoning mixes out of the cupboard and the jars are empty. So then I had to get them, get all the herbs in them. So next week, we're going to make up some seasoning mixes. You know, the little packets that you would normally buy for casseroles or curried sausages or tacos or whatever. The, the ones that cost an absolute small fortune for about a tablespoon of ingredients. Those. We're going to make up some of those. So you might like to have a pen and paper ready to jot down the ingredients because I've got heaps to get through, all sorts of different ones. Um, in single quantities, like single serves, and in bulk quantities. Because seriously, if you're gonna if you're gonna get everything out to make up one, you might as well do enough to last a little while. Just makes sense. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope I haven't waffled too much. Again, if you liked our show, please give us a thumbs up. And if you know someone who might like the show or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button just down there to send them a link. And have a great week, everyone. Happy Cheapskating. And I'll be back next week to show you how to mix up some really, really tasty seasoning mixes. I'll see you then. Bye.